Today, we're gonna to actually fill in and use the skills matrix step by step, so let's get into it. Okay, so this is the skills matrix I'm gonna show you. It's a very strong one. Before I get into this, showing exactly how to fill it in, let me just tell you why this is one of the best ones you'll find out there, by quickly comparing it to others you might be using. This first one that I've gone back to on the first tab here, too much information. Yes, it's very visual, but there's too much information on the, on the left-hand side there, and you can't see where, whether you've got enough people trained for each process, and if enough people are well enough trained. The next one, you'd need to work at NASA to work this one. Just look at the complexity there. No one's going to manage that. It's going to be tricky. You're never going to fill it in. You might not ever understand it. The third one, this one is close, but no cigar. It's a similar template to what I'm going to show you. The only difficulty with this one is that it's got the vague categories and vague categories are a big issue. You don't want can complete task under supervision and can complete task without supervision to be the dividing line that the team leader subjectively makes. You need an objective way of doing it. And that is where we come into this type of category. This is a really strong way of categorizing the stages for training. And that's shown on this strong one. So here is our strong version I'm gonna walk you through. And you see here it's got a title for the assembly line skills matrix. We've got our four categories there, A, B, C, and D. A is the least skilled. So it's somebody who needs to be supervised. They can do the job and they can achieve safety and quality, but they can't yet hit the cycle time regularly yet. B is they can do it with minimal supervision and they can perform it to cycle time. So they're getting safety, quality, and delivery in this case. C is where they become unsupervised, plus they can do a bit of basic fault finding and help with changeover. And D, completely unsupervised, minimal touch, check them every so often, but they can train others as well. Those are our four categories. You see down the left there, we've simply got the name of the person, what position they have, so in this case they're all operators, and whether they work day or night shift. Across the other axis, these are the processes that they've been and are being trained on. Subassembly, kitting, manufacturing assembly, for example. And what you do is you write in, so I've added myself down the bottom there, R Watkins. I'm an operator, I'm on days, and you can see that at the moment I've, I've been trained to a B, so I can do the job assembly one, I can do it hitting safety, quality, and to the cycle time. Assembly three, A3 job, I'm better. I can do that, but also I can basic fault find and do some changeover support. And then, even better on assembly six, I can do D, I can train others. Now, the great thing about this is that for each operator, you can see at the end there, and I'm gonna explain this in a minute, it shows you whether each operator has enough flexibility. See down here at the bottom, it shows you whether each process has enough operator cover to deal with things like holiday and absence and whether, they, whether you can uh, keep the process going. So if I just add in, I'll fill in another one for me. Let's say I've recently been trained in M1 manufacturing. Uh, I've started being trained. I've been shown the job. I can do it safely and I can hit the quality, but I'm not yet up to speed. I'm going to put an A in there and you'll see that the conditional formatting changes it to an A. Let's go over to this side where we have the operator versatility. I'm just going to turn this box around so you can see what's going on. These three columns tell you has each person got the ability to do three processes? So you require them to do three processes, how many they can actually do to a good level, and what the status is. Green and above zero means yes, the person's sufficiently flexible. Red and a minus means that they can't. So in this case, we can see S. Tropeman is a B on kitting, an A on manufacturing one, and a B on assembly three. The only one they're actually a C or a D on, so they could be left unsupervised, is assembly two. So they've only got one process where they're strong enough to be left alone. That's why they're two down. That shows you a plan. It shows the team leader a plan for who needs to be trained, which is really handy because a skills matrix should show you what the status is. Today, given holiday and absence, I know who to put on what because they're trained or not, but also it tells me what I need to do in future. So that's the operators. In terms of the process cover, the bottom box here, you can see something similar happens. It's S1 subassembly. We can see that we require three people 
to be trained up to either a C or a D. Remember, a C is unsupervised and a D is unsupervised and train others. You need three people to be trained up. And in this case, we have three who are. Let's go back up and see who they are. That's M. Chapman, C. Jig, and D. Campbell. We're covered on that. What if I wasn't on there? Ra R. Watkins at the bottom. You can see that assembly six, we need three people trained up to do that, but only two are at the moment, which is C. Jones and T. Boone. So we've got to get either A. Hughes, D. Campbell, S. Tropeman, or J. Trickett up to training level so they can be unsupervised and do some basic fault finding or change over support. Let's say we do that training. We train uh, Charlie Jig. We then change him to a C. That turns green, and you can see that now we have enough coverage on that process. So that is the basic training matrix. Nice and simple but it also has everything you need for a team leader to be able to manage and control their area. Now, this can be kept on a computer. Clearly it's electronic on Excel, but you actually want it available on the lines for the start of every shift. So if you can beam it up on a screen, maybe it can go on an HMI or on the team leader screen. Worst case, you might need to print it out once a month, stick it on the board, and then they update it and you renew that every month. Get hold of the template we just walked through in the comments below. And if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe and like this video to help other people on their lean journeys to find their way to us.